Today we're testing out the Victron Energy Smart Shunt. This can handle 500 amps and it is a bit more expensive than other shunt options, but it does everything. I think you guys are gonna really like this. And before we test it, let's talk about its special features. The first, it works with 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt systems. Next cool feature is if you have a second battery, such as a second battery bank in a marine system or an RV, you can monitor the voltage with this shunt. Next cool feature is you can monitor the midpoint voltage of your battery battery bank. So let's say you have four 12 volt batteries in series, you can actually monitor the voltage halfway between those batteries. And this will help you see if there is a problem with one of the batteries on either side of that voltage reading. Next, this can monitor the battery's temperature and it can also compensate for Pukert effect if you are using lead acid batteries. Next, it connects with Bluetooth. So you can hide this away, especially in an RV system and then pull up the stats on your phone. And the package comes with the shunt and two power cables. It also comes with a quick start guide but I definitely recommend reading the full manual online first. We're gonna hook it up to this 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery bank and a 4000 watt inverter. And to connect this shunt to our system all we need to know is where to connect to the battery and where to connect to the loads and chargers or to the system minus. And on this system we have a positive conductor and a negative conductor. So we want to connect the shunt on the negative conductor between the loads and the chargers and the battery's main negative. But if this shunt's only connected to the negative conductor, it still needs potential to power on its onboard electronics to monitor the voltage across this shunt. So for the bare minimum, you need to connect one of these power cables to this V battery plus to the positive terminal of your battery. So let's actually hook it up. First, we wanna connect the inverter or chargers and then tighten it down with a size 17 wrench. Now we can connect the battery negative. And this is the battery cable, so we're gonna connect it right here. Now that the shunt is connected, we can give it power. So we're gonna get one of our power cables and connect it from here out to the positive terminal of our battery. And they did such a good job with this. This is so nice. It is so easy to install. And I just heard it turn on. You can hear a buzzing. Now that we have power, we need to connect with Bluetooth to our phone and calibrate the shunt. So pull up the Victron Connect app and it says smart shunt, 500 amps. So we're gonna click on that. Next, you need to complete the Bluetooth pairing request with six zeros and then press OK. <gasps> and once it's connected on the first page, you have basic stats of the battery and then you have a history tab. And this is really cool. It shows the deepest discharge in amp hours, average discharge, last discharge, cumulative, the energy discharge, energy total, um, charge energy, um, lots of cool stuff here. And then you have trends, so it plots it out on a graph, which is really awesome. And to calibrate the shunt, you need to go to the settings tab and then battery, and then change the battery capacity. This one has 280 amp hours, so we're gonna change that. And the charge voltage, I would say is 14.6. And the discharge floor is zero. And the Pukert exponent for lithium iron phosphate, we can do like 1.01. .01. Charge efficiency factor can be 99. Now we need to synchronize SOC to 100%. This battery is fully charged and I let it absorb all night. So I'm gonna press synchronize to 100%. And that's it, we should be good to go. And we just added a 3000 watt load to this inverter. And this is what our shunt is telling us, 269 amps, 3300 watts, and we've already consumed three amp hours. And it also tells you how long you can run this load for until the battery is completely dead. And while the battery discharge, you can see the discharge total energy and time since last full charge and so many other cool stats. And here's a graph showing our consumption over time. You can also change it to power or consumed amp hours, which is probably very useful for a solar power system, or state of charge percent. That's pretty cool too. Man, this thing is great. It has so many cool features. And unfortunately, the battery temperature sensor does not come with this shunt. You have to buy it separately. But now we're gonna use this shunt to monitor the voltage of a second battery. So if you go under miscellaneous and auxiliary input, put it to starter battery, and connect the auxiliary to the positive of another second battery. 
And now that this wire is connected, we need potential to measure, so we need to complete the DC circuit. So we're gonna add a conductor from the negative terminal out to this battery's negative. Now this wire is connected to the negative, and let's see what it says. And on the main page, it will show the voltage of this second battery, and it states that it's at 13.3 volts. And if you disconnect this wire, look how fast it updates. And now let's reconnect the wire. How cool is that? So very useful for monitoring the voltage of a second battery bank, such as on a boat or an RV. I should have bought this ages ago. This is a really nice shunt. Also, if you have other Victron components, such as the inverters and solar charge controllers, you can connect this to your entire system. It works together. It can also connect to the VE Direct, so you can actually have a full color display of your system. And right now we're at 80% state of charge, so let's add a charger and watch it charge back up. And now the battery is fully charged and it has reset and we're at 100% state of charge. Now that we know that it works and it's awesome, we're gonna hook it up to my solar golf cart. So we're gonna add this shunt to the main negative conductor. And this is the main negative conductor that goes out to the battery. And this is my old Hall Effect sensor. This was actually inaccurate, I found out, and I kept trying to calibrate it with no luck. So we're gonna take this apart and put the shunt in here instead. And before we mess with these wires, we need to turn off these batteries. And this black cable goes out to the inverter charger, and this red cable goes out to the power system or the motors. And then this one goes out to the battery. So we're just gonna slap this in here. This hole is too small for this terminal, so we need to make a bigger one. This lug is too small for this terminal, so we're going to have to add a new one. I'm sure I could have used my small crimper, but I love this thing so much. This is a perfect crimp every single time. And this connector is too small also, so I need to replace this. I don't need this wire because this was for the old shunt, so I can take this out actually. Now we're gonna use double-sided tape to mount this on the inverter because it's pretty dirty in here and I don't wanna put it over here because there's lots of dust. I'd rather have it upright so if water gets kicked up from the wheels, it should be pretty protected right here. And that's it, that took only a few minutes. So we should be good, let's power it up. And it's working guys, we need to change the settings though for this battery. And so these packs have 95 amp hours at 50 something volts, so we're gonna add that in there. And check it out, we are charging with 172 watts with the solar array outside. Also check out my new solar power system, 16,000 watts. We'll make another video about that later though. We're at the top of the hill and we're gonna see how much power it took to drive up here. It's a little hard to see, but we've only used 3% of our battery's capacity to make it to the top of this hill. Now I'm going to drive around the block and see how much power it consumes over time. So we're going to graph it out on here. That drive consumed 12% of our battery's charge. And this solar panel array is charging at 167 watts. So I'll come back tomorrow and this battery will be fully charged up.
And that's pretty much it. This system works. So because it's a Victron device, I can recommend it because everything that Victron makes is high quality. It does cost a lot of money, but it does work really well. And that's pretty much it for this video. This was really fun. And if this thing breaks inside of here, I will let you guys know. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.